Hi, I'm Neil Barker and welcome to our AppleiPodParts.com iPad 2 digitizer and plastic surround removal and replacement video. Um, today we're going to remove the digitizer, you can see it's pretty pretty mashed up and the plastic surround around the digitizer, I think it's been previously repaired, uh, not by us, and pretty mullered in the, in the process. So we're going to do that. Um, here we have some classic tools, normal, uh, you can all get from our site, the, uh, the iSesimo is absolutely invaluable, perfect tool does everything. A um, uh, little Phillips, um, little professional or metal Phillips uh, screwdriver and some little tweezers. You can get all these tools um, on our website appleipodparts.com and a plastic non-removal tool. We use, you know, it's good to have all these. They're uh, pretty handy in their own right. Um, and a screw organizer tray. Again, you can buy this on our site um, as little compartments for all the screws. So obviously we've warmed the iPad. Um, we put them in a temperature controller and we don't like heat guns because they tend to melt things and by the time you've heated up a, a certain area the, the heat's bled away so we've warmed it up gently um, 20 minutes and a temperature controlled ovens that we have um, around about sort of 50 odd degrees um, not too hot just enough to you know sort of melt the adhesive a little bit so we go straight in with our SESMO this is a really flexible extremely thin uh, tool that's absolutely fantastic for getting into the edges and that you know and it's because it's quite a wide profile it doesn't tend to damage the plastics around um, too much either uh, and it's just a fantastic tool uh, we helped the guys develop that at uh, DOSPod and um, it's just brilliant we use them everywhere on everything uh, and again you can get it on our site so we're separating the um, you know we're sort of using our fingers to sort of hold or preload the, the digitizer off while we go around the edge and just trying to break the bond. You don't want to go too far in, uh, otherwise you go into where the LCD is. Uh, and you don't want to be scratching that. As you can see, it's pretty messy. iPads are a bit, you know, when it's when they're just a crack, it's not too bad. The digitizers come away, but when they're smashed like this, um, it's, it's pretty darn awkward. So it takes a long time, it's time consuming. And here we can see that uh, we've got it on a little bit of fast forward. My colleague here uh, is sort of, Risking his fingers, so you've got to be careful. Make sure that the uh, you don't get affected by the glass, and uh, you've got to be gently. We've sped this video up. We're not reckless. We don't do this thing fast. What you do need to watch out for is right in the area where the, the mute switch and the volume cable is. Uh, the cables underneath the glass. So if you go in too far, you can easily snag those cables. So you've got to be extra careful. Probably not probe too far in with the iSesimo or whatever tool you're using. Um, so you get an area where it's not cracked. You can work your way down gently, pulling on the digitizer. Uh, not pulling on it too much, but just to pull the adhesive away. And, uh, you know, it's nice when there's not too much for smash damage. And right here, you've got to be careful again. There's a Wi-Fi cable right there. Uh, as you look at the iPad on the right-hand side of the home button, you've got to go in extremely gently. And you're using the ISSMO to go between the glass of the screen and the and the, the Wi-Fi cable. And you're pushing the Wi-Fi cable away from the glass so that it stays with the iPad. Um, because what happens is if you pull that glass too far and the, the cable's stuck to the glass, then you're going to tear the cable straight off of the iPad. And uh, although we sell the cables on our website, so you can easily replace it, it's probably best if you don't need to. You've also got to be quite cautious around the home button as you get there. Um, there's not too much of a diesel just around there, but uh, as you can see there, you know, too much pressure and uh, pop goes the screen. So you've got to be really careful. Um, I would recommend using gloves um, and sort of any, any proportion you can take. Also, obviously, the longer you take, the more the iPad cools down and the, you know, the adhesive becomes effective again. So if you need to sort of warm it up a little bit, um, then do so. So we've got the digitizer coming away here now. Um, any sort of lift you can get, then oh, you know, gently lift. And what you're looking to do is open it like a book with uh, the screen coming off to the left um, because that's where the digitizer cable is. Um, and all the way down the left-hand side, you see the adhesive there. Um, what you're looking to do is sort of hold the iPad down, a bit of pressure down, and then gently sort of peel the, the, the digitizer away from the adhesive. Um, uh, you've just got to be careful not to tear anything. But you know, uh, digitizer, uh, you know, it's useless now anyway, so the cables, you're not your main concern. But if you're lifting it to access the battery or the LCD and the screen's okay, um, then obviously you want to you want to maintain all of it. Um, and it's perfectly, um, you know, an easy request to, uh, to lift the digitizer and keep it in one piece. Um, it just takes a lot of patience, a bit of warmth, and, and slow going really. So there we have, we've lifted the digitizer off. There's lots of bits of glass. One thing I don't recommend is that you wipe the LCD screen. It's got lots of glass all over it. 
and that will just scratch the LCD. It's best to sort of shake or blow off the LCD if you can, and obviously remove the, all, all the uh, bits and bobs, that, you know, all the pieces of glass that you can gently and slowly. Um, so here we've, uh, we're retrieving the parts off of the digitizer, the smash digitizer, um, that we're going to need to put onto the new digitizer. The home button, as you saw there, was a bracket. Um, that bracket is just stuck down with the same glue that everything's held onto. So you peel that off and the home button comes out. And then this is the little camera bracket that uh, we're replacing as well. That will either stay with the digitizer and again, it's stuck down with adhesive that you just need to get the ISSMO behind and peel it. Or it's, it's still on the camera if it's all smashed around there. So you retrieve that as well. Um, it's, it's got the same adhesive on as, as the rest of the iPad essentially. Um, so we'll retrieve those bits. Uh, as Apple, as I always say on all my videos, they're there for a reason. Don't leave them out if you can help it. Um, yeah, they are there for a reason and uh, they need to go back. So we're going to remove the, the LCD now to get the, the cable for the digitizer. The LCD has four screws, one in each corner, um, and they're, they're sort of cross-head. So you've got one there, got one under, the, under a bit of adhesive and some glass there. Um, right about there. And the other two corners as well. Um, they come out quite easily and they're you know they're the same size in those four corners but we want to keep them separate for any other screws that we may take out um, so we put them in a little screw organizer tray again you can get all these parts trays etc you know accessories uh, and tools on our website appleipodparts.com so while my colleague does that um, obviously as I was saying earlier there's lots of shards of glass around we need it spotless and we use a combination of a little air blower um, a little airbrush compressor that's pretty good and pretty handy um, also you know we sort of uh, use a small vacuum cleaner to remove glass as well um, as best you can you, you can blow them and blow the bits off you gotta make sure that they go into a bin you don't want to blow lots of shards of glass into the air so you've got to be got to be careful so we've got our spudger the world famous spudger there um, and it's a case of once all your screws are out you can just gently lift the LCD and again it comes away like a book from from right to left almost because the cable is, is down the left side where the, the digitizer cable is. Um, again, all I always say, if it, if it takes too much lifting, then there's gonna be a, you know, a sticking point somewhere, so revisit that, don't, don't force anything, um, because it will just break. So there's the LCD cable, it's a pretty hefty cable. Um, it can come off both ends, and you've got a little metal clasp, we're gonna lift it at the, the board end, pop the spudger under that small uh, metal bezel there, and then just use the bezel to gently rock the connector out there and it comes away. Easy as that. We're going to remove the LCD completely out. Um, it's easy to clean the iPad then and we can get to the cable for the digitizer without risking the LCD. The, uh, the digitizer has two clasps. Um, again, gently lift these two black clasps up. They're easy to break. Once you've broken them, they're difficult to put back together. If they're broken, broken, then you could be stuffed. And then the digitizer cable it pulls out that way. This has been a change before. Sometimes the digitizer cable is stuck down to the board just above those connectors. So you might have to lift the cable gently. And again, I can emphasize gently because you do not want to tear anything off those boards. Um, so there you go. The, the iPad there can now be cleaned, removed all the adhesive. And I think we're going to peel the frame off as well now, the little black plastic frame from around it. So it's just a big cleanup job, really. Um, using whatever tools you've got. If you need to rewarm it to, to sort of free up the glass, then do so, and it'll lift, the adhesive will come away better. Um, obviously, we do this day in, day out, um, but just go gently. That's all I can say, really. Um, you know, you don't want to be slipping and snagging cables and snapping all sorts because you're in a world of pain then. Um, so, yeah, just, just sort of take it easy and do what you can. I've been uh, known to ramble. People on my YouTube channel say that I do ramble, but I'd rather give you more information than not, um, especially when you watch those. I mean, I've been a victim when I first started out watching those videos that, uh, that you know, someone's done rather hastily. And uh, before you know it, you've, you've lifted something, you've snapped a cable, and lo and behold, it's not mentioned on their video. I'd rather mention way more and bore you to death to, than you snap a cable. Um, even though snapping a cable is good for business, I'd rather you didn't. So let's speed it up, um, obviously the cleaning of all the adhesive. You can peel the glue off of the Wi-Fi cable, like so, but just keep your finger on it down so that it doesn't, the Wi-Fi cable doesn't pull off and snap anything. And uh, yeah, generally, mate, just make sure you clean every bit you can.
So I'm going to remove the, the plastic frame because it's fairly mullered. Um, it's, it's literally just stuck down again with this sort of similar adhesives. So all we do is just get a little sort of spatula tool and under there and it just peels straight off. And uh, just removing all traces of it really. <coughs> so it comes away, it comes away quite nicely. And if there's any glue that's left behind, we can peel that off as well. And um, it's your choice how you put the new frame back down. Um, you can use slight dobs of uh, super glue, um, or you can sort of get some of this adhesive from our site and just cut it to shape. And uh, yeah, the new frame will sit down quite nicely. Um, what we tend to do is obviously bang any dents out the corners as well, which again, there's no real way of doing that per se. We, uh, we just use some shape tools and just gently um, not the dents out, otherwise that will stop the frame going in and the glass going in. So here's a new frame, you can get that on our appliedparts.com and it will sit in nicely once it's the right way around, there's a few notches in and out so it has, there's only one way it can go and um, it's a case of just sticking that down uh, Yeah, so it sort of fits nicely. We're going to use some pretty strong super glue um, and it's, it's not sort of ultra runny, it's quite a thick super glue and uh, just got a dip, dab onto a little plastic bag, and then we're just going to use a little, um, you know, just something thin, like a little flat blade screwdriver or something, just to dab little bits on. You don't want it to be squirting glue and it going everywhere. Um, and just make a right mess. So what we're trying to do is we will put glue probably around about a third of the iPad to start with, so that we know the frame's in place and we know it fits. Instead of trying to do the whole thing all in one go, you can end up with it gluing in all sorts of different places and not fully home. So uh, we'll put glue all the way along the top, um, quite sparingly, and down the sides a little bit, and then sit the frame down. And what you're gonna do is, uh, as you sit the frame down, um, it has slots in here, as you can see there, for different places. And we're gonna push it into the corners, up to the edges, um, and that way we can make sure that it bonds down and dries. And it, you know, because once, if this is glued in the wrong place, your glass won't fit. So with that in place, we're then gonna do sort of around the bottom edge and then the sides, so on and so forth, and just hold it in place and then it glues nicely in place. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's pushed into the corners, that you've removed any dents um, as best you can so that the glass won't be impeded when you put that in um, because there'll be no give in the glass, obviously. So we're ready for the glass. Um, we're happy that the frame's in place, it's all glued down. It's all clean, there's no glue left, there's no glass left. Um, so yeah, it's, it's ready for the digitizer. So again, digitizer, I mean, on our site, we do the reproduction and the genuine. Um, to be honest, the reproduction is genuine quality. Um, we don't stand for anything less anyway. Uh, so this is fresh out of stock. Um, so obviously it's got a film on the inside that you can, you know, you, you probably, unless we don't put our peel here sticker, you probably wouldn't know it's got a film on it. It's that, you know, it's that tidily put on. There's no air bubbles underneath it. And we, we have to put that, peel here because uh, you get a lot of uh, people leave it on there and obviously you don't want that so obviously peel all the little bits and bobs of the cable, uh, the, sort of the cable and the connector protectors on there um, easy for me to say and um, yeah you draw the cable out gently no forcing of anything and it, it you know they're designed to sit in place wherever you put them now, this is quite tricky the, the cable is quite flimsy and it's a case of just gently coax in the connector, it'll only go one way and you can see that sat there. It's a, Gently push it into the connector and on, on that cable, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two white lines and those light, white lines pretty much match up to where the connector starts. Um, and then we just use the, the sort of a, an end of a tool just to gently pull them home and then flick those two clasps down really, really gently. Um, don't force anything because if you, if you break those, then that just, that's the nightmare. Um, and again, just make sure that they're fully home, otherwise your digitizer won't work fully. So the LCD, is, this is quite a stiff cable. So you need the LCD right above it. It'll, it sits into that connector quite positively. There's only way, you know, sort of one way it can go. And then once it's fully home, just use a plastic tool to just flick that clasp down. Um, we've removed the glass from the LCD. There's just some dust on it that we'll remove just before we stick it down. Bit of a test to make sure that uh, it all powers up. Um, my colleague here is just uh, just going to wait to see 
that it's all as well, that nothing, you know, that it works, it talks, and the digitizer functions to a degree as well. We tend to uh, test them quite comprehensively as best we can, obviously, laying the digitizer over, not fully pressing it down, make sure that there's no dead spots on the screens or anything like that. Uh, a good way of testing this is to um, swipe down from the top and the bottom, and that will bring the you know sort of the icons down and then up, uh, and then put it on its side and do the same. And you're testing the extremities then as well. Um, obviously, LCD sat down. Now uh, we can go through the process of popping the four screws back in, one in each corner. Um, on this replacement, there's only the four screws we've taken out, so that's uh, that's not too difficult. So we can put those back in. Um, and then yeah, give it a good clean up really. Essentially it's one of the most time consuming parts um, is the fact that it is just cleaning it. We use a lint free, uh, lint free cloth there um, and we also use sort of isopropyl wipes to make sure that the LCD is nice and clean. And then we wipe it down again and so on and so forth. Um, really tricky to to you know to clean it but it's you know the last thing you want is fingerprints and dust underneath the screen um, and that's why the digitizers that we sell are, are pretty darn good as far as under the clear plastic layers they're pretty clean um, need very very minimal sort of wiping down you can get some crap digitizers and really cheap parts um, that you know you peel the, the plastic off and it's covered in crap and and fingerprints and stuff and you, you're into cleaning that again it just you know we strive to make sure that our parts genuine or not um, uh, you know the best possible quality um, all around really what we need to do is obviously fit these parts back onto the digitizer now what we've done on this little bracket is on the back side of it we've just put some a um, couple of tiny bits of the adhesive tape that we have on our site applypodparts.com um, or this and you know there shouldn't be anything left over when when you lay down the uh, the adhesive the pre-cut adhesive on the, the iPad so we also have some sheets of the stuff, um, small sheets that, that you can buy separately. And we also put two pieces on the back of this, um, which should come on the pre-cuts actually, on those sort of, I don't know what shape they are really, but um, either side of that button, we place the adhesive on there. And um, and also on, on the home button, you can see at the bottom, there's like a, a plate that comes off the bottom. There's a tiny bit of adhesive we put on that to stop the home button spinning. Um, and that sticks itself down to the digitizer. Um, sometimes you can retrieve the adhesive comes off with these and, and it is good to go back on, but other times they all bubbles up and it's non-sticky. So what we're doing here is just removing any trace. These bubbles will get in the way if you put your adhesive on there and, and you know, just it's all about making sure that it's nice and clean and prepared properly. Um, otherwise it's just gonna look rubbish. And also it will stop it from working. Um, Things like that, you know, if, if it's not spaced properly, then you're into, um, you know, things not home button not working, this and the other. So there's a pre-cut adhesive set uh, for the iPad 2. Again, you can get these on our website, appleipodparts.com. You can see there it's pre-cut to this little home button bracket. So you can either use tweezers or your fingers, but just don't, don't get your fingers on the glue itself. It just stops it being sticky. Um, or try not to. Uh, I think tweezers would have been preferable and then push that down and then you can peel off the back in now it's really key and you you know you might think oh, you know this goes in anyway but where this bracket goes and if you can take a picture of your old digitizer as it comes off for the location of this bracket then do so because it needs to go in back on the exact same place we used to do in this day in day out so we know where it needs to go but if it's any if it's a millimeter too high or too low then the contacts, those two little gold contacts you see on the back, they won't line up with the iPad itself and the home button won't work. Um, so this bottom edge, we tend to go by, this bottom edge lines up with the bottom of that black square. See that black square in the middle? We tend to line up, so you've got the light grey, um, there you go, you can just see the light grey underneath at the bottom and the, that's pretty much how it lines up and that's a good reference. Um, so you see the grey, then what we do is we go around the other side, we stick it down, we go around the other side and we make sure that the home button is actuating and clicking properly and uh, all feels nice. Now we're into uh, making sure the rest is prepared by putting down the adhesive strips. They're relatively self-explanatory but obviously this video should tell you where or should show you roughly where they go. Um, there's a lot of 
different people's, you know, people saying stick it to the iPad or the digitizer. I think Apple stick this to the digitizer first, um, and then it sticks to the iPad. Whereas we put it on the iPad, it, it's almost preference. These pre-cut strips are designed to go on the back of the digitizer, and you have to sort the make. They work both ways, but the way we lay it out, um, it works. But the way it's cut it is almost designed. It's, it's designed to go into digitizer, basically. But to be honest, we found after you know doing lots of these, we found that it's easier to put on the iPad itself, just because you know where the edges are and you can get it laid down properly. Whereas if you put it on the glass, it's just a little bit harder to to get lined up. And to be honest, the what the methods we use, make sure in it's you know the, the basics are make sure it's clean, make sure it's got adhesive all the way around. Um, it, it sticks nonetheless. Um, so you know it's personal preference, um, but it's easier to line it up and make sure that we get proper seals when it goes on the, the iPad itself. So we're laying it down. I know chat. I know, I know folks. This is a lengthy video, and there's a lot of me rambling, probably more than normal. But there's an awful lot to an iPad replacement properly. You get shops offering to do this in iPad replacement in half an hour. This and the other. Well, to be honest, it takes 20 minutes to heat it up to get the thing off. Um, so you know it, it's slow and steady gets the job done properly and then you don't end up with it lifting and and all sorts of problems like that. Uh, a lot of, and I speak to a lot of people that ask us questions about, you know, they, they've done it, they do it for a living, but they, you know, they have digitizers lifting up or they've had bad experiences with suppliers with rubbish parts, rubbish adhesive. Um, there is an awful lot of that. There's, there's an awful lot of, um, you know, sort of low grade parts and adhesive out there, but a lot of it is in preparation, making sure the surfaces are clean, making sure that you just do a good job. Um, it really is, it's, it's that simple. Um, and make sure that you watch this video fully before you try yours, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of pitfalls and we try and, um, you know, not shortcut anything so that we can tell you all the, the pitfalls. Um, so they were just trimming the adhesive around, make sure it all fits, make sure that there's, there's sort of, most of the edges are catered for. And um, so that, you know, it stays down. So as a reminder, iPlyPodParts.com, tools, accessories, guides, and help. If you want to help, leave a comment. There's a little contact us tab on the left. Drop us a line. We're, we're always happy to help. So in the last throws of putting digitizers there, we see that we fill in all the gaps that the, uh, the pre-cut doesn't uh, cater for um, with some uh, sort of other tape. Like I said, you can buy the extra tape from our site. This is the final cleanup. Make sure that all of the old foam is off the LCD because this is something that we do that pretty much, I don't know anybody else that does this, is that we fit foam around the LCD and that stops the LCD and the digitizer from touching and it comes with it on, but when you remove it, the digitizer, the foam crumbles away and I don't, think anybody, I don't know of anybody that replaces this. Again, this stuff you can get on our site is the proper foam, cut to size um, and there's four strips top, you know, it goes all the way around the LCD. Um, and it, yeah, it, it creates a bit of a dust barrier, but it also stops the LCD. If there's any sort of discrepancy issues with putting it back together, it stops the LCD from meeting the glass. And you, what happens is you get like an oil mark um, between the glass and the LCD that's highly annoying. Uh, customers will reject it. And um, yeah, it is just where the glass is, the two glass surfaces touch and it, it's, uh, this, this is a nice little tweak. Like I said, not many people use it. Um, we sell the foam and we always use it. And um, yeah, and we fit it together. Um, the personal preference, whether you put all four strips all the way around or whether you put, just put two strips down the sides, um, depends what model it is to whether or not we use the two or the four strips. Um, so then you're into the bit of the lengthy cleanup process really and making sure it's dust free. There we go, we get a little compressor, we give it a blow. Um, and it's all ready to go together. So obviously we peeled the backing off the foam, um, the two foam strips down the side, and we're gonna peel the adhesive um, backing off as well. And the key is not to touch the adhesive once you've done it. Um, you can, uh, sometimes, I mean, you, you can peel the adhesive off and then put it in, back in the oven at a lower temperature just to make sure that the, the sort of the adhesive is, is more tacky. Uh, what we do is we do that after we stick it down. So final cleanup, Real ball lake, well worth doing. You know, a bit of an air, a bit of lint-free cloth. And then we're ready 
to peel the backing of the digitizer off. This is a very last minute thing. And we're almost straight off and then straight over with the digitizer to prevent any dust from, from getting in. Uh, it's immensely difficult. You'll always get, oh, there's my colleague. Um, you'll always get a little bit in there. And what we do, we go in with the top first because there's no cables there. Sit the top in right up against the plastic and then, and this is a bit of a shame, it's off screen. Hopefully we'll pull it back on. There's the cable for the digitizer. Now this is key, that that, that cable gets sort of gently pushed in with a non-sharp, and these tweezers are quite uh, rounded edged. Um, and what you're doing there, and I'm trying to explain because it, unfortunately it's not caught very well on camera, is you're gonna push the cable in and it will find its fold position where it slips down the side of the LCD screen. Um, what I would probably do is try and get another video, maybe with just that in the future. But if that, if you immediately, if you just push this glass screen down, then the digitizer cable is going to is going to break and it's going to fail. Um, so you're really looking to spend quite a bit of time um, getting that cable coaxing it in between the LCD and the side of the iPad chassis. It will find its way, and it almost point where you you're using the tweezers to poke it in. Um, into that gap as you push the LCD or the digitizer down slowly. And what happens is if there's any springiness, um, if there's any springiness in the glass going down, you know that you've caught the cable, so you need to lift it away. If it finds its home and, it, in, and where it slots in, the digitizer will sit right down all the way home perfectly. Um, and yeah, so sorry we didn't uh, catch the right, the, you know, the detail of it folding on camera. Um, I hope for my explanation and you seeing it as well and taking your time I can't insist that you take enough time on this um, as much as you can you'll see when it goes down it, it's you know it fits properly um, so once that's home you're looking at the glass is fully home there's, there's Damien um, the glass is fully home and then you can do it one last test whereby you test the home button to make sure it comes on uh, you're testing the power button to make sure it comes on um, because the adhesive's not fully set or anything like that, so you could always peel it off and uh, reseal if need be. So there you go, folks. A rather lengthy, probably laborious, I uh, apologise, and rambling video. However, I'd like to think that I've pretty much covered everything um, for the digitizer replacement and plastic frame replacement on an iPad 2. Um, roughly the same for the 3 and the 4 as well. And... Um, yeah, hopefully I've not missed anything off. You can get all the parts, uh, worldwide shipping. There's a discount under this YouTube video as well for those um, tools. Um, and again, all the guidance on our site, appleipodparts.com. If you need any help, contact us. Uh, there's a link on the left hand of our website. Click on there. We'll be pleased to help. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching and bearing with me. Cheers.